my word for it. Daniel chapter 2, verse 34. We already read this story, but it says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out, and without hands, which still the image with one who made them from iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. What is that stone that smote the image? It's Jesus. Jesus, the, the, the chief cornerstone, the stone that the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. And it talked about how Jesus would crush in pieces and destroy and break them like a, with a rod of iron. Jesus was that stone. And when he crushes the devil's kingdom, when he crushes that image, it says that that stone became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. And we said that's the millennial reign of Christ, Christ's kingdom over the whole earth. So Christ's global kingdom is that great mountain. It's represented by a mountain. But let's look at it specifically in regard to Babylon. Flip over to Jeremiah, chapter number 51, just a few pages to the left in your Bible. Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 25. This is a prophecy that is spoken to Babylon. And God calls Babylon a mountain. Look at Jeremiah 51, 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord which destroyest all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. So he's talking to Babylon and saying, you're a mountain, you're a destroying mountain, I'm going to make you a burnt mountain. Because he, we're going to talk about later in the sermon how he's going to destroy Babylon with fire. So we can see multiple places. What should you do? Meal prepping, meal prepping for my love, for my love. I love to meal prep, I love to meal prep because it makes a house smell so good. I'm going to bed super early today. I'm really tired. Should we bring food so I can live? Uh, we're going to have Bible study at, at 7, so in three hours. Okay, and then after Bible food. study, I'm going straight to bed because I'm tired. Yeah. Okay, what, what do you need, what do you want, uh, need to get? Uh, yep. uh, three apples and a hot dog and a whole... I'm going to let the um, onions brown, and then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients for this. The rice is almost done. The, the onions will brown as soon as the liquid's gone, and the liquid's depleting pretty quickly, so... It'll brown pretty quickly here in a little bit. So is the Miata able to be washed or is it already washed? Super excited for Johnny to taste it. I always like when he tastes the food I make. Revelation chapter number 17. We see this verse again and I think it's going to come clear now when you read it. So I added the ingredients. Now I'm letting them cook together for a tiny bit and then I'm going to turn off the heat and it's ready. Da, 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 done. And the rice will be done very shortly. Yay! All about the history. So go, go back sort of in our minds to the... Um, the, the history, go back to the book of Acts, the people that Paul was writing to, and Corinthians, the books of Corinthians are in the, say, first half of the books of Paul that he wrote, the letters that he wrote, but Paul was preaching to people who, historically, some of them 
may uh, have seen, probably not till this point, or were not people who were alive who would have seen Jesus Christ, but they certainly would have been just in the generation after. So remember so often in the book of Acts when we studied, we would hear it had to be, the people had to believe on Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not just which hath wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and there are seven not by themselves, but because of Christ or because of God. He says in verse one that he, it is the will of God that he is an apostle and that he's written to the church, not his church, but the church of God. He extends grace and peace to them, but again, he doesn't have any basis to extend that from himself. It comes from God. He says that God, that they are comforted by God, and in fact, that the consolation or their comfort abounds, again, not by anything they can do, but by Christ. They trust not in themselves, but in God. Um, chapter 1, verses 19 through 23, we looked at already. That's the mention of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, when Paul, rather than defending himself, he says, this is what's true of God. In speaking of forgiveness, he says that forgiveness is made possible only in the person of Christ. He said he was called to preach not his own message, but the gospel of Christ. He gives thanks to God and his triumph is made possible in Christ. He says their very lives are a letter of Christ. So again, we see that idea of the image where they, people, he is called, chapter three is where he says, do we need letters of commendation again uh, to, to prove ourselves to you? Do we need letters of reference? But no, he says, our lives are the letter of Christ and it's written by the spirit of the living God, not something that they've accomplished on their own. He says they have confidence through Christ, before God, their sufficiency is of God. The veil of unbelief that they recognize, Paul recognizes, was on his own heart at one time. It's done away, not because of what he's done, but because of Jesus Christ. And it is through Christ, by the Spirit of the Lord, that they are changed to be more like Jesus Christ. Um, and so that certainly has been... Paul's um, attitude in before them, one of humility. He says, the gospel of Christ is what is foremost. Then verse seven, it talks about even, it furthers this idea of his humility. He says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Um, what, what's he referring to? What treasure is he referring to there? The Spirit of God indwelling his body. Okay. I think, Camille, I see your lips move, but can I, here, let's, is that possible? No, there? yeah, yeah. I thought it might be salvation. Okay. All right. The, the, the gospel. The treasure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Somebody else. I was saying the Spirit of God indwelling. Can okay, you hear? Can... Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was yeah. true. I don't know. Okay. All right. Good. So those those treasures they all come under salvation, the Spirit of God who indwells us. Those all come because of of salvation. And so that treasure we have the ministry that he talked about in verse one of the gospel of the glory of Christ. We hold that, or they hold. We do as well as believers. We hold this treasure or this ministry in earthen vessels. Now our, um, our study guide had a, a note, just some additional explanation about that idea. We found it was interesting because of this idea of emphasis on Paul's humility. He's just said they're servants to the Corinthians for Christ's sake. The idea of uh, earthen vessel was probably an, a common, everyday, cheap, easily replaceable um, pot. And uh, it says occasionally the people would hide valuables in them, mainly because nobody expected to find something valuable in an earthen 
pot. It's one that was used for everyday tasks, even the most undesirable tasks. And so, uh, Paul, when you think later on in, um, is it in Philippians where he gives his pedigree and he says, I count all of that as loss, as refuse um, for the knowledge of the excellency of Christ Jesus, my Lord. And this is the idea that we see in Paul's life here. Um, remember too, Paul, he had, um, let me just ask you this. When you think about the apostle Paul, what are some things that are known about him uh, personally? Maybe what did he look like? What did he sound like? How was he known? Well, he had an eye issue. 